everybody, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today. I wanted to share a video featuring the new Neat and Tangled release with Simon Says Stamp for Stamptember. This is the stamp set and it's called Hello Pumpkin. And I wanted to use this to make a fall scene because I absolutely loved the little mouse that's included in this set. There's actually two of them and they're facing two different directions. But I will use the one that's facing towards the left. And I'm going to then use a bunch of the other images in the set and use them to create a scene. So what you're seeing me do here is I'm stamping them down onto some watercolor paper. This is Strathmore watercolor paper. And I used some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black ink to stamp them down. Now to do all my coloring, I used my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors and I also used a few Daniel Smith watercolors as well. Unfortunately, my video camera had stopped recording when I was going ahead and coloring those leaves. So unfortunately, I don't have the footage to share with you on that. But I wanted to show you all the other different images that I colored. So I'm using some different colors of oranges, yellows, reds, greens, a lot of autumn colors. And I'm just coloring the different images in. I'm using the color, I put it down, and then I blend it out a little bit with some water. I'm not using a lot of water here, I'm just using a very light hand with the water because I don't want things to be too watery and blend too much. I want to have some really good concentration of color. Now the mouse was my favorite part to color. I started off by putting a base of a lightish tan color. And then I went ahead and faded that out to be super light. Then I went back in over top of that with some gray and colored over top of that brown. And that creates a little bit more of a warmer tone to this mouse. It gives them a slightly different variation than just the gray color that I used, which was more of a cool gray. So I'm adding different layers of color on top of him using that gray color over top of the brown. And then I brought in a rosyish color that I had made using some light orange and a red tone. And I had blended those together and washed them out really good so that they were a very, very pale tone. And that created a really nice blush. I did that on his ears and also on his face and belly. There's a bunch of really cute images in this set, including this little mushroom, which I added some red shading onto. I also really love the cute tiny t pumpkin that's in that set. And on the pumpkin, I had used a yellow color. I believe it was gamboge yellow. And I also used a gorgeous Daniel Smith orangish reddish tone, which is a really interesting color to use because it kind of almost has different tones of colors in it. And I really love it. I don't remember the name of it, but I'll have it linked in the video description below. For the tree trunk, I used some different colors of browns and blended those together. And as I'm coloring, I'm actually going to let that brown sit a little bit while I color in the mouse's scarf. The reason I did that was because I wanted to add some additional layers on top of that tree trunk, but I didn't want them to blend. I wanted them to be a little bit more uh, contrasting with the base coat of coloring that's already on the trunk. So I set that aside, colored in some of the mouse's scarf, which I threw in a little bit of purple. I used some yellow, red, and also green. So here's where I'm coming back in with some more browns. This isn't fully dry, but it's dry enough that it's not going to blend completely with the color underneath. So I dropped in more color and that created more of a layered tone to that tree trunk. And then I let all those images dry before I cut them out. Now I'm bringing in a piece of watercolor paper using that same Strathmore watercolor paper. And I'm going to start painting on the scene that's going to be behind my images. So I started off by adding a little bit of green and I'm being very scribblish with the color. I'm just layering colors, allowing them to dry, then adding more on top, kind of in a dabbing scribbly motion. So you can see we get a really interesting effect having all those layers on top of each other and it creates a very loose look to grass. For the sky, I just created a very light wash of a bluish green color and just used some brush strokes, some dabbing, and create a little bit of texture, but it's a very, very pale color. I also watercolored another grass strip onto a scrap of watercolor paper and I cut that out with a grass border die from My Favorite Things. Now I'm gonna go ahead and build my scene. So you're seeing me lay out these really cute stitching dies from Lawn Fawn. These Lawn Fawn dies create little stitching lines that make something look like they're flying through the air. So because this mouse, I wanna make him look like he's getting blown away with the different leaves that are flying around in the scene. I thought it would be perfect to incorporate these little stitching line dies into the panel. So I went ahead and die cut those into my scene using my Big Shot machine. And then as I go ahead and lay this tree trunk on there, you can see how that's going to make the mouse look like he's flying. So I've kind of loosely arranged where I'm going to want everything to be and I'm gonna start layering them onto my background panel. So I popped up the grass with a piece of foam tape. Now my favorite way to attach the images onto my scene 
is to apply a little bit of liquid glue down at the base of the image and then put a small piece of foam tape at the top. What this does is this puts the bottom of that image flush to the paper and then the top part is lifted up so it kind of creates this really interesting dimensional feel. For the mouse, I just popped the entire mouse up off of the panel because of course he's flying through the air. So he needs to be at a slightly different dimensional angle than everything else. I also popped up the leaves with some foam tape as well. And of course he's blowing away with the leaves. So he's holding on to one of those leaves as he's flying through that air. <laughs> I don't know, I was having fun with this scene, putting it together and I was kind of using my imagination and seeing what kind of fun little kind of story I could create with this fall scene. With fall, you get a lot of wind, or at least I do up here in Maine. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to make the mouse fly. So I stamped the sentiment and heat embossed it onto some orange colored cardstock using a sentiment from that same Hello Pumpkin stamp set. It actually said happy fall, y'all, but I ended up taking off the y'all and just using happy fall. And then I popped up a few more leaves to finish off the scene. Now I can go ahead and start working on putting this onto my card base. But I wanted to do a couple little extra things, so let me show you how I did this. I die cut a scalloped piece of yellow cardstock from this really great scalloped die set from Neat and Tangle. It's got three scallops and a few banners, and I really love how these fit behind stitched rectangle dies so nicely. So I used that and I'm going to attach that down onto my card base. But the card base is cut from that same orange cardstock that I used for the sentiment banner, but I'm stamping the new Christmas sweater stamp set from Diamond Says Stamp Stamp Timber Release. I'm stamping that onto my card base using some clear ink, some embossing ink. Because the embossing ink is very much like a watermark ink, it creates a darker impression on your cardstock of what the color is underneath. So in this case, it creates a slightly darker orange. I layered some other pieces of cardstock behind my scallop panel. I think I stacked up like four of them and that created just a slight bit of lift off of my card base to give the piece a little bit of dimension but nothing too crazy. To finish off the scene, I added some Nouveau drops. I added clear drops to this background and also onto the mouse's eye. And then I also used a few white dots on top of that mushroom. This scene was absolutely so much fun to create. I loved using this Hello Pumpkin stamp set. It is absolutely adorable and I have a feeling this stamp set will go quickly. Remember that Stamp Temper stamp sets with in collaboration with other companies such as this one here, the Hello Pumpkin, all of those stamp sets are limited editions which means once they sell out they're not coming back. So I would encourage you if you really like this stamp set to go get it now because it may not be around for very long. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got some inspiration on using this stamp set. If you enjoyed this video, there are two more on screen here that you might want to check out that feature some fun Stamp Timber release products. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you again very soon with a new video and have a fabulous day. Bye!